in this video we are going to look at these two workflows to so compare the two workflows the uh, offline I call it V-Ray here but really it's offline workflow meaning basically when an image takes a long time to render you know you press that render button and watch the little squares go in for every any of you who are V-Ray users or Corona users typically these images would take a few minutes to a few hours to render and then the real-time workflow or in our case Unreal using Unreal Engine when we are rendering you know for VR games it's 90 images per second so what does that mean it's different we are actually getting similar more and more similar results with both workflows that's why we're here today um, but what's the trade-off right there's 90 images per second is a very significant speed increase compared to one image every four to six hours so offline the v-ray workflow that i call just to this will be very familiar but we have basic steps 3d model whether it comes from revit 3ds max or any other application whether it's 2d uh, plans will need to be made into 3d so we do that in 3ds max and there's nothing particularly tricky about that we just model apply uvs and apply then we move on to applying our materials so for that we use textures we buy off the internet or create in Photoshop from photographs and so on the lighting is done within well for architecture visualization mostly 3s max using v-ray so we here we're beginning to use v-ray tools like the light you know the v-ray Sun the v-ray applied global illumination and then light so on for our interiors or, or even exteriors so then the image is being rendered and a lot of the time we will create additional passes like you know reflection or just masks to be able to control different areas highlight or work with the image in general uh, z depth for the depth and and so on and then we will take this into a uh, post-production like Photoshop so you know sometimes the image or the images if it's an animation may be completely rebuilt from scratch using the passes to allow you know the direct light the global illumination uh, the sunlight the colors all to be tweaked on different layers in Photoshop and then of course adding any effects like sparkles like flares or depth or fog and things like that are usually added in After Effects any sort of fire dust smoke and all this stuff will be done in a, another package like After Effects and so on so these are the steps in the traditional offline render and you will see that there are 3ds max photoshop v-ray then v-ray again and then photoshop after effects a lot of packages we need to use um, and that takes a lot of skill takes a lot of time and it cost a lot so here comes unreal engine so unreal engine have got this final pixel policy so what that means is that they will deliver the software will deliver the pixel on screen which is great news for us <laughs> because from this point on we are only using unreal engine unreal engine will do all of it so let's have a look we'll have our model our 3d model will be again coming from can application you know whether it's revit rhino microstation so on a lot of it comes in in uh, or sketchup comes in 3d nowadays but we will need to edit this model more so than in the offline rendering because we will need to apply our light map UVs that's a new term for a lot of us who are using Unreal Engine will never have done light maps and we won't have even done much UV unwrapping so we'll have a look at this in detail in this course a new concept here light maps UVs Obviously, when it comes to large models, we'll need to organize and take into some new ways of working that are specific to efficiency in video game, like instancing. 
and then it went with landscape and many objects like many trees and so on that's done a little bit differently in unreal but for the most part it's pretty similar to what we're used to except we will have to deal with our light map uvs then we jump into unreal engine throw all this 3d model information into unreal and then from that point as i said again pretty awesome because we've got this one software that's going to deal with all of this stuff and a lot of it will be automatic as well so with regards to the lighting and we'll go into more depth in the following video about this but we'll have to use new things like the skylight obviously we've got our lights we've got the spotlight and the omni lights and this is where we can plug in our eye yes the fog is also um, whether you consider it lighting or environment but then we will deal with our light map sizes and the light mass so i'll explain a little bit more in the next video about that materials this new uh, node-based materials and that's the only thing there is in as opposed to in you know in max we've got our sort of mini material browser then we'll have some specific things about textures, for example, where they need to be square and the use of Substance Designer, which is a new software coming on in the market and is more tailored towards creating the new types of textures that are needed, which is obviously, yes, I shouldn't really mention it at first, the new PBR workflow specific to Unreal Engine, physically based materials. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Then in the post-process section, there's a very simple process volume, which is two clicks to drag into the editor, but it's got enormous power and especially with regards to tone mapping. So again, we'll talk a little bit about that, but those are fairly new concept that is all integrated within Unreal Engine. Tone mapping is sort of transforming an image which goes where the range of brightness goes from zero to one being the brightest thing, which is usually the sun. And tone mapping is taking down this range so that we can mimic what is going on in camera films. Then here is our sort of slight comparison with the offline world. There's a cutoff here because we are um, obviously now bringing in interaction. And this is again another limitless area that we can dive in with being able to change lights, change materials, and the environment and other characters interact with the world and with each other happening through blueprints and although in Oxviz we don't kill much <laughs> and interact with others yet but we can do a few cool things which will really uh, make our clients happy and then finally we will also output our work in so that's using sequencer during movies to be published or delivered to the clients we can obviously do very high res renders and we can publish to executables interactive vr obviously and mobile one thing which a lot of people <laughs> do and that i've been experiencing and hearing from people is just deliver the file straight as a unreal engine file so there's no publishing as such you just work and the work that you have finally is the work that's being delivered so that's as well so there you go so that's an overview of the workflow a little bit of highlighting some of the differences between the two and let's dive into the next video where we'll be looking into more specifically the lighting which is what we're talking about in this course